Many galaxy coasters were built across the globe, but arguably the best one is located at Sylvan Beach Amusement Park in New York. This particular version has several things going for it. A great view, two car trains, and minimal braking. Find out why all these things make this particular galaxy coaster better than average. In the 1960s, multiple manufacturers debuted ultra-compact and portable coasters featuring sharp drops and helixes. Pinfari debuted the Zyklon, Schwarzkopf offered the Wildcat, and SDC offered the Galaxy Coaster. This review will follow the latter. These coasters stand 45 feet or 14 meters tall and feature roughly 1,650 feet or 500 meters of track. According to RCDB, 46 versions were added to amusement parks across the globe. Some others travel the fair circuit. Sylvan Beach Amusement Park in central New York had been around since the 1870s. The park had gone decades without a roller coaster, but they relocated an old galaxy coaster from Seattle's Fun Forest Amusement Park in 1993. Sylvan Beach kept the galaxy name and placed the coaster towards the back edge of the park. This currently is still the park's only roller coaster. Interestingly, this coaster had been closed the past two years. The ride, along with the entirety of Sylvan Beach Amusement Park, was closed in 2020 for the COVID-19 pandemic. When the park tried to reopen the coaster for the 2021 season, it was discovered that a family of osprey had built a nest atop the coaster. This bird species is endangered and extremely territorial, so the park made the difficult decision to keep the coaster closed for another season until the birds migrated to South America in the fall. My only visit to this park took place in 2022, and the coaster looked fresh. The ride didn't look nearly 50 years old like it is. Galaxy sported bright blue track and red supports. The coaster had three trains visible, but only one was on the course. And this was all the park needed, as it was a walk-on even on a holiday weekend. And it was deliberate to keep the ride open. This coaster is a valley risk according to the operators. Each train is comprised of two cars, seeing up to eight riders per cycle. But the seats are pretty narrow, so adults often choose to occupy their own row. This ride needs to be front-loaded per the operators. This can be a little annoying on a quiet day because the back car offers a superior ride experience, but this policy is better than having the coaster stall out and close for a chunk of the day. This coaster also has very unrestrictive restraints. There's no seat belt, just a single position lap bar that was quite a ways from my lap. Once dispatched, you round a slow corner and ascend the lone lift hill, and you get a wonderful view of Oneida Lake, the beach, and the entire midway on the way up. This view continues on the slow turn that follows as well. You then navigate the first drop. If you're in the back car, you'll get a little airtime. You don't get this airtime in the front car and I often don't get these negative G's in the single car models either. The valley offers some weak positive G's, and then you head up into a large turnaround. Those up front get a faint pop of airtime entering this element. This turn is another slow one, but it gives you more time to take in that view, so I'm not complaining. This leads in the ride's second, largest, and best drop. It offers a decent burst of airtime for those in the back car, that is also paired with a great head chopper with the first drop and some moderate positive cheese in the valley. This drop is considerably less power in the single car models. You then rise upwards losing a lot of speed, so there's no air time here. You then navigate a 900 degree downwards helix. It starts slow, but the final rotation is a mild positive cheese from the speed you've regained. The exit from this helix delivers a sudden jolt of laterals. This transition is much less refined than what you'd see on newer coasters today, but it works in this ride because you're free to slide side to side across the entire seat. You then head into another helix, this one being a 540 degree downwards one. This one starts as slow as the prior one, but it ends sooner so has less force by the end. At this point the ride is supposed to hit a series of brakes before calmly returning to the station. While the brakes are visibly present in this one, they do not engage. This makes the finale surprisingly good, unlike the Rise of Skywalker. The exit of the helix basically forms an S-bend. The transition out of it is unbanked and points the train right, which throws the riders to the left. Moments later, the track turns left, again completely unbanked, 
So riders are aggressively launched to the other side of the train. You then have this little hop into another set of brakes. With all the extra speed, this hump gives a quick but decent pop of airtime across the entire train. Even better, that brake run I just mentioned fails to engage yet again. So you then speed around this unbanked turn back into the station, getting sustained laterals the whole way. You then enter the station where an employee stops you with a manual brake, ending the coaster. Now what about the smoothness? This coaster is a tangible shimmy to it, but it doesn't cause any discomfort. Yeah, you'll feel it, but the trains are comfortable, and you're not going fast enough for it to cause a headache or anything, so it's a non-factor for me. So, what would I rate this particular Galaxy Coaster? I would give the version at Sylvan Beach Amusement Park a 6 out of 10. This is the best STC Galaxy I've ridden. These rides are usually one and dones for me, but I rode this one a few times. The pops of airtime and surprising laterals at the end had me coming off laughing. I had never gotten a finale like this on any other galaxy. Add in the nice views and this is one memorable experience. I will also take this over any Schwarzkopf Wildcat. I will take the Pinfari Zyklons or 3 car trains though over this one. Those ones have even crazier airtime in the back car. Check out my review on Wonderland's Mousetrap if you want to learn more. So those are my thoughts on Sylvan Beach's Galaxy Coaster. What are your thoughts on this model as a whole, or this particular installation? Let me know down in the comments. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you consider subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.